These days there are many different types of mosaics, from traditional mosaics to mixed media mosaics. Well in this video I'm going to show you how to create a picassiette mosaic using half a teapot, flowers and some other materials as well. And this video is sponsored by Made by Miranda. So anyway, let's get into the video. I called into a business the other day called Made by Miranda. And Miranda is a lovely lady and she's very talented. She creates these beautiful ceramic flowers and leaves. And this is just a very small selection of what she actually does create. Now Miranda also collects cups, teapots and plates and she likes to cut them in half. Well I'll let you on a little secret, it's actually not Miranda that cuts these in half, it's her husband and he enjoys doing it. Now it requires some uh, talent to be able to cut through a cup and also the handle and have it so it sits totally flat. Here's another one here, a beautiful teapot that's also been cut in half and also a cup and saucer that would look great as a focal piece in a mosaic. So between the two of them, they're very talented. Now I'll put the website down the bottom of the screen there in case you'd like to go to their website and uh, make any purchases. And I thought what I would do is I would create a Picasset uh, mosaic using this op shop frame or thrift store frame that I paid $5 for. And I thought I'd be using uh, this teapot along with the lid and some of these flowers. Well, I'm up to the fun part, creating the mosaic. And as you saw in the intro, I've pretty well chosen what I want to put into this uh, Picasset mosaic. Now, I've also added a few other things. Uh, the rims of these plates, which have a beautiful gold on them. And I've actually painted uh, the edges on some of the edges, a 24 karat gold. And these may be showing, I'm not really quite sure. Well, the edge may be showing and that's why I've painted it. If it's not showing, then it's not going to be an issue, but I would like to have that on there in case it is showing. So I've cut these out of these old um, antique plates and I'm going to bulk it out with this because one of the things when you're doing any type of mosaic of this nature, you need to make sure that you bulk it out. Layering is key. And that means having the big things at the back and bring the smaller things at the front and you layer it because that will also give your mosaic depth. So that's why I've used these as a bit of fill uh, to increase the bulk of the mosaic. So what I'm looking at doing is just give you an idea. Now I need to see that's the top. I'm just going to put a T here for the top because I'm going to be turning this around to show you. And I don't want to forget and do it upside down. So what I'm looking at doing is I've got these beautiful glass tiles called Cephala Gold and I'm looking at creating a row along the bottom. And I'll probably have to cut the last one. And then I'm going to get my teapot here and put in there. Now, I can go up higher if I want to, or I can go down a bit further. But I've chosen one row here because I want as little cutting as possible. And if I went a bit further down, I'd have to cut these tiles in. So I find for me, doing it like that is fine. And then what I'll do is I'll do I'll stagger the rows. I'm going to do three rows in total. Oops. And I'll have to cut all those. So I'm going to do three rows in total. Then I'm going to kind of bring this out like that. Actually, that needs to go here. Right, I'm just moving them around because I've got the gold edge, so I just need to take that into consideration. I don't want to have the gold edge in the pot. Something like that. And then I'm going to add the flowers and the leaves. These are going to be sitting pretty well flat. I'm not going, I mean, you can have them up like this if you want to, but I'm actually looking at having them sitting flat and cut into each other. But basically that's kind of design. And then I'm going to put the flowers around the edge and over that as well. But I'm not going to fully cover this area. So that's what I'm looking at going with. 
uh, as the start. And I've also thought about adding, these are iridized white vitreous tiles and they're very smooth on top. And I'm thinking about extending this up here with those vitreous tiles and again cutting them in, but kind of like covering the areas up where that MDF is going to be showing. I've got a limited number of these, so I hopefully will have enough to do this. And again, these will be staggered, but this will give you an idea of what I'm kind of like playing around with. And then I can then add the leaves and the flowers into it. So I think it will look quite good. Well, I hope so anyway. Now on some of uh, Miranda's flowers, I've actually taken uh, these ones, three of these ones, and I've actually put iridized glass gem in the middle of them, rather having them like that, just to add a bit more interest into the center because I'll probably end up and put these kind of in the center as kind of like a focal piece and the other ones around it. It's a matter of playing around until you get it right. The glue I'm going to be using will probably be prep multi-use adhesive and also epoxy sculpt because I'm going to want to add a bit of depth to these flowers, maybe put them up higher. So I'm looking at using Abe's epoxy sculpt to do that and that will hold it beautifully in place. Like I say, it's all about layering, playing around, getting it right, and um, hopefully it all comes out in the wash. I'm kind of winging this. I have this plan in my head, but I'm kind of winging it. All right, I've got my, now I've decanted my prep multi-use adhesive uh, from the big container into this little container. So that'll work well. And you can use other glues. You don't have to use prep. You can use weld bond if you want. Any type of glue you, you like to use. MAC glue is also a very good one. Any glue that you're really comfortable with. And that's going to be suitable for the project. Now I'm looking at the grout color. I'm looking at almond. I like to choose my grout color you know, at the very start, but I'm looking at an almond grout color. So uh, I think that will work well. To adhere this down, I can use uh, epoxy sculpt which will work. I can use Sedel Fix-All, which is a SMX polymer, which is what I'm thinking about using. Uh, and uh, I'll put that down like that. Now, another thing, and I'll just turn this round. Another thing that you can do is you can also draw around your teapot. And you can if you want a mosaic around that and leave the teapot off, you can. But I like to have my teapot in place and I will mosaic around that teapot because I think that will work really well for my needs. But you can do it any way you like. This is just uh, how I do it, but it doesn't mean it's the only, uh, the only way. So just go with what feels right for you. Now I'm just going to use this lid and this glove just go into the center there and I'm going to put the teapot in here. Now you can, like I said, you can put this down, trace around it and put the Sedel, go around your outline. But I'm actually going to do it this way and do it directly onto here. Now I'm using the big gun, but uh, certainly you can put this into a baggie if it's easier for you and go around uh, the outline of the teapot with the baggie. But it's very, very easy to do. We're just going to go out with a bead all the way around. When we put this down, some of it's going to squish out, but that's okay. We can leave it or clean it up. What we don't want to do is flood it all the way around. Okay. See, that wasn't hard at all. Okay, now we need to put it where we want it. So... I'm just going to gauge it. I 
think that's about right. Yep, that looks pretty good. Equal on equal side, both sides. Okay, now we're just going to push that down. Not real hard, just firmly, and that's it. It was as easy as anything. Anyone can do it. It's not that difficult at all. You just have to be organized. So I'm going to let this sit here for a while, and then I may come back and just do a little bit of cleaning up of the uh, polymer around the edge there. But if I do, it's not going to need uh, much cleaning up at all. Well, the mosaic's starting to take shape. I have glued all these Cephala gold glass tiles down. I've got those shards that I showed you earlier today and I've laid them out to how I want them. And I've actually got a drawing, a pencil line around each of the shards there, just to give me an idea of how I want them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to now cut these into each other. And that means I'm going to have to get a bit of a texture and I'm going to just sketch around each one that I'm going to be cutting, just roughly, just to give me a bit of a starting point. And then I'm going to cut these where they overlap so that these will sit flatter. Now what I may end up and do is also cut these, like for instance, this one sticking up a little bit. So what I might do is put a cut in here as well. I can cover that cut with some flour, so I'm not too concerned about that. I could certainly have that sticking up, but I don't think I'll go down that path. I'd prefer them sitting flat because I want the flowers to uh, stand out. So that's what I'm up to. And all I'm going to do is get my nippers here, and I'm going to use my lepinets here, and just cut it. Hopefully the plate cuts where you want it to. In this case it is. And just So that's working quite well. So what I'm aiming for is that's going to sit in there like that. I need to cut this one down next. So I'm going to continue that and then I'll come back and show you uh, what it looks like. It kind of fits in like a jigsaw. Now I've cut all these so they all interlock together, but I still have this situation occurring where it's rocky. What I'm looking at doing is probably putting a cut along here and a cut along there so that it sits flat. And the same with this one here. I may put just one cut in there, one in there, and maybe one in there as well. Well, I've cut them and they're all interlocking quite nicely. It doesn't matter if they're not totally accurate because it is going to be covered in flowers. And don't forget, keep your shards. Keep these big shards because you can use those. Uh, they may come in handy somewhere and I usually store those in a small Ziploc plastic bag. Don't forget to also wear your P2 or N95 dust mask when you're cutting crockery and your safety glasses as well. All right, I'm gonna put some cuts in these. Uh, so that they sit flat. I'm just going to mark now where I want to put the cuts in. I'm going to use my glass scorer and a um, pair of uh, scorer breakers as well to actually cut these so I get a nice cut. All right, we'll try this one first. I'll just move that over here. It's just an ordinary glass scorer. Get my breakers and hopefully this will work. Yep, there you go. Oh, that's sitting much better. So I'll do these as well. Well, they're done and I'm just going to now clean off the texture mark. And I think they look really good even if I don't actually cover the areas with flowers, I think that they will look really quite good in the piece anyway. Well, I've decided to use epoxy sculpt, so I've mixed up a fairly large batch of it, and I'm going to now apply it. Now, I'm going to apply it to the actual tessera rather than to the backer board. And the reason being is that 
I want to put it to a specific area. I want to make sure that I cover the tessera and not the MDF uh, where I don't want it to. So, and why I'm using epoxy sculpt is because these, this is not totally flat and I think uh, this will make it sit flat. Uh, it'll take up the extra, it'll take up the slack is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to do that. Put that there. I don't want it to sit really high, so I'm going to push this down. Let's see how we go. Let's get a tile out and see the height of it. Yep, I need it to go down a bit more actually. Make sure you use gloves at all times when using epoxy sculpt or any of the epoxy clays or anything like that, any similar products. There you go. That's better. There you go. And then when I finished, like an area, I'll get a rag and I'll wipe it over with water, a damp rag, because I don't want any epoxy sculpt residue to be on the surface. If you take it off as you go, then it's going to save you a lot of heartache rather than having coming in the morning and finding the residue is there and you're not going to get it off. We're going to have a lot of trouble getting it off. Well, that worked in quite well. Uh, I've only got a little bit of epoxy sculpt left. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is rather than waste this is put a few of these leaves in here. Something like that. So I might go ahead and do that. I may actually have to cut a couple of those. This is really good because when you use epoxy sculpt, you can continue on with your work. You don't have to wait until cures. And of course, you could have used other adhesives underneath uh, this crockery. You didn't have to use uh, epoxy sculpt, but that's just what I wanted to use because of the unevenness. And also I wanted to continue on. And I've got a little bit here, which you probably won't be able to see, just sticking out a bit. You really don't want to leave the epoxy sculpt to set up where you don't want it because you will never get it off the next day. After I cleaned up the leaves, I realized I had made a mistake. I forgot to add the poppy at the bottom of the frame here. And uh, luckily I picked it up now and not tomorrow because the Cephala Gold were a little bit difficult to pry up and I managed to do it, whereas tomorrow they would have been virtually impossible. So well, I've added the poppy and just cut up some cephala gold to fit in around the poppy. So now what I'm going to do is actually add the white iridized vitreous tiles. And these are a beautiful tile. They're very smooth, which means they'll be really easy to grout. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to now, there's going to be a little bit of cutting in here. Actually, I might put that there. Before I go any further, I think what I'll do is I'll add some leaves into the background because I really want to embed them into the background rather than have them sit on the tiles. So I've got some leaves here and I'm just going to put them where I think that they're going to work. It's kind of like winging it, which is what I do with most of my mosaics, but uh, it seems to work out when I do it. So hopefully this will be one that will also work out. So I'm going to adhere those leaves into the background and also this poppy here, this flower, and I'm going to be doing that with epoxy sculpt. Now I'm going to be doing that off screen because you've already seen me use the epoxy sculpt. So once I've completed adhering the, the leaves down and also finish with these vitreous tiles, I'll come back and then we'll start grouting and I'll show you that process. Well, I finished adding the tiles, the leaves and the flowers into the background. I've cleaned it all and now we're up to the grouting stage. Then after we've grouted, I'll be able to add the rest of the flowers and then this piece hopefully will look good and it'll be finished. Well, I'm good to go. I put some blue painter's tape around 
the frame there just to protect it a little bit. Depending on the frame you've got, you generally don't have to do that. But for about two seconds work, three seconds work, it really does save a bit of cleaning up. So that's my preference. Now I've got my grout here, so I'm let it slate. And now I'm going to apply that to this piece. And I may have to turn this around while I'm grouting. And I've made up a reasonable amount of grout, which is fine. So I'll turn this around. And I like to use my hands. I like to use my hands and fingers to actually push the grout in. But uh, some people prefer like rubber spatulas, all sorts of things, paint brushes you can use. It's just depending on what you like. But I prefer to use my fingers. When it comes to this gold, I'm not going to be rubbing as hard. It could be fine, but it may not be. So unfortunately, that's just part of the, the thing. You learn, you wing it, and you hope it all just comes out in the wash. Unless you've used that plate before, which I actually haven't. A lot of people hate grouting, and I say this in every video, but I really like it. Well, in every video that I'm actually grouting in, put it that way. I don't know what's going to happen to my gold leaf on the side of the plate here that I painted. I may have to repaint that again. I actually didn't take that into account with the grout, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to let that haze over for around about 10, 15 minutes and uh, it'll start to cure. And then I'll come back and we'll start cleaning this piece down. All right, we'll go in for the next clean and again, this is a very wrung out damp sponge. And I'm just lightly going in to all the nooks and crannies. If I see any grout that is where I don't want it to be, it might still be a bit soft like in there. I can just dig that out. And that's the beauty about it. You just take your time and you dig out any grout that's in there. I still don't have to do it yet. I can wait until I give it another bit of a clean, but if I can get the bulk of it out now, it'll be quite easier. So I'm just going in like that, going around the leaves and flowers and just digging out that grout where I don't want it. If I tend to take out too much, I do have that container of grout just there. You don't throw your grout away yet because you might dig out a bit much and you might want to just add a bit more fill into it. I like the cleaning up process. Probably annoys a lot of people, but I like it. Okay, I'll let that haze over a bit more, then we'll start going in with a dry rag. Well, it's been around about half an hour to three quarters of an hour because I really want some of it to firm up a bit, especially in amongst uh, these areas here because I don't want to be digging the grout out. So uh, I'm pretty well ready to go in now with a dry rag and I'm just going to go in here and just gradually start polishing it up. You know, getting rid of the, it's still a bit of work to do, but still get, you know, getting rid of those uh, excess grout pieces. Taking it off the surface of the tessera. And I'll probably use still a little bit more water, but that's okay. This will get the bulk of it off now without digging the grout out. It's going to be certain areas where you'll get in with the rag and just dig it out a little bit. Get rid of that excess grout. There you go, like that. If there's any little bits in there, you can get a little damp rag, for instance, in, in here. This rag's damp and just, and it comes out easy as. All right, well, I'll continue cleaning uh, using a very damp rag and a dry rag, and we'll come back and have a look at it when it's completely finished. All right, well, we're on the home stretch as far as cleaning goes. I've been using toothpicks and tools and all sorts of things to actually get in there and dig some of that grout out where I don't want it and it's working quite well. I've got my container here with some grout in in case I dig out a little bit more than I need and then I can then uh, just refill that. 
but you know getting in places like that is a bit of a pain but that's where a toothpick will get in there and remove some of that so I'm going to actually remove this tape and then I'm going to do another check for the clean and uh, see how we're going so all I'm going to do is just flip that over and then just take that tape off This is where I'm going to go with my damp rag. Just get down in there and just give that a bit of a clean. While the grout is still a little bit soft. Just to smooth that out a little bit there. So I think it's coming up really quite well. Well, it's all cleaned up. Well, not really because it's like all mosaic projects when you finish grouting, you think it's clean and then you go and have another look and you can always probably clean up some of the grout lines or there might be a small piece of tessera buried under some grout, but the bulk of it's cleaned up. So I'm going to leave this for 24 hours and then we'll come back and arrange the flowers and the leaves. Well, the time has come to arrange the flowers and then adhere them down. So I'm going to need to turn this around because I need to see what I'm doing. I have this lid here and I was originally going to put it like that. It sits really well, but I want the flowers to look like they're bursting out of the teapot. So I'm probably going to add it something like this. Then I've got these three flowers that I mentioned earlier in the video. And I'm thinking about maybe arranging them Something like that, something like that. Then I've got these red ones. So we put that in there. And then I've got these other red ones, which probably there, there, there. I know there's a lot of red over that side. I might change that around. Um, I'm thinking about maybe a red up there. I'm thinking about maybe a purple there. Sometimes when you do things like this, you take a photo as well and you look at it through the photo because that's going to give you another perspective that you can't see. Uh, what might look fine here, the photo will pick up and you look at it and go, oh, that one's out of place or that one's not working. So I find for me, I'm always taking photos of my mosaics throughout the, the uh, creation of them. Because it's amazing what you can see through a photo that you miss by just looking at it. Okay, I've come up with the final design and now I'm going to start adhering things down. So I'm going to start off with the three purple ones in the middle. and I'm using epoxy sculpt as the adhesive because some of these need bulking out because of the, um, for instance here, it's a different height and the epoxy sculpt would work really well for that. I want to make sure when I adhere this down that the epoxy sculpt is not going to be seen. So I'm trying to have it so I hide it at the same time. So I'll continue on sticking all these down and then we'll come back when I've stuck them all down and have a look. Well, this mosaic is completed and I had a really great time creating it. It was a fun project to do. And I really love the glossiness of the tiles and the leaves and the flowers. And I really love how those leaves and flowers just bursting out of that teapot.
Now I had a great time creating this piece, it was a really fun piece to do and if you get a chance check out Made by Miranda, her website and I'll put the details in the description box of this video. And if you enjoyed the video give it a like, if you saw value in it also uh, give it a share and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy!